What's up guys, Andre here and today I want to do a quick follow up on the previous video I did on container queries, but this time within Tailwind CSS. So if you're not familiar with container queries, they are like traditional media queries, but instead of looking at the size of the viewport, they look at the size of the container the element is in. So again, be sure to check out the previous video for the syntax in regular CSS. So I have the same two examples as in the previous video, but now within Tailwind. So the first one is this weather widget within this two column layout. As you see, I'm using CSS grid here. There is some responsive styles. As you can see, I'm using the small breakpoint. This is the first column and this is the second column. And you can see the weather widget here. And for the actual component itself, again, we have some responsive styles here, as you see, using the small breakpoint and a bunch of Tailwind classes. So if I were to resize my browser here, you'll see that it is responsive. And you can see after a certain point, it is a stacked layout here. So say we wanted to use this component within the sidebar here. Let's go ahead and do that. So back to our app view. Let's copy this weather widget and put it within our sidebar. Let's save that and let's see what we get. You can see it does fit, but it's a bit cramped. And if I were to make this even smaller, you'll see that it definitely doesn't fit on this size. Now again, this component is responsive. So after a certain screen size, it does stack like we want it to. So a bit smaller here, and now it stacks. But again, with traditional media queries, it only looks at the size of the viewport or the size of the screen instead of the size of the container, which is what we want. So let's take a look at how we can make use of container queries within Tailwind to make this component here respond to the size of its container. So currently it is a first party plugin. So if you take a look at this page here, you can find the installation instructions, but at some point it's probably going to be merged into core. But for now it is a plugin, so let's go ahead and install it. Let's copy that, let's stop Vite, let's install it. Let's run Vite again. And let's take a look at how to add the plugin. So just add it within the plugins array within our Tailwind config. Tailwind.config, let's put it within plugins. And now it's ready to use. So let's save that. And let's take a look at the usage here. So if I scroll down, you'll see that they sort of chose the at symbol for anything related to container queries. So to define a container, you want to be responsive. You use at container, not to be confused with the normal container class. And then similar to media queries, we have different sizes for containers we want to respond to. And again, we use the at symbol for that and then a size. And you can see the different sizes here. So if you scroll down, you'll see the different sizes here for the containers. So let's go ahead and do that. So we want this container here and also the sidebar to respond to container queries. So we can make use of that at container class to define that. So back to app view. So it's this one. Let's say at container. And the sidebar is this one here. So at container. Let's save that. And you can actually take a look at the elements tab within DevTools. And if I open up the app here and open this div up, you can see we have this label for grid and there should be a similar label for containers. And there it is. So you can see this is a container and this is a container. So now we can replace our media queries with a container query. So again, the sizes are here. We can use at whatever size we want and replace our media queries. So within our weather widget, I'm going to replace all of the small breakpoints for traditional media queries. So let me just select all of those. And I'm going to replace it with the large container query size. So LG colon, and that should be it. So if I save this back to the browser, let me just close DevTools here and it looks a bit messed up. Let me just refresh. And now you can see the component in the sidebar is now the stacked version because it's looking at the size of the container instead of the size of the viewport. And again, this is still responsive. So if I were to make this smaller, you'll see that this one is now the stacked version as well. And if I continue, these two columns should stack as well. And you can see at this point, it still has room for the desktop version, but at some point it won't and it stacks here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other example I have here. Let me just put this back to full size. Let's go back here and let's change this to app weather and let's change app cart to app. Okay. And let's refresh this. So now we have a shopping cart and there is some functionality in here. 
So I can update the quantity and the totals will change. So if I change this to two, that should change the totals. It does. And you can also delete items as well. So again, this is responsive. So if I were to resize the viewport after a certain point, we do get the mobile version. But say we wanted to use this in a different container that is more narrow. So again, if I scroll up, you'll see this cart here, which is a drop down, and the component should be in here. But you can see there's not enough room for it. So again, we want to make use of container queries to look at the container size of this and then respond accordingly. So again, we can use add container for this container here and also the drop down, and then just add our container query sizes. Let's go ahead and do that. So within app, so the drop down container is this one right here. So we can say at container. And the main one is this one right here. Again, not to be confused with the normal container class. Okay, container, save that. And again, if you want to double check, you can check the elements tab in DevTools. So let me just open DevTools up. Let me just drill down here into these divs. There's one container and the other one should be within here in the nav in the second UL in this list item. And it should be this div right here. And you can see it right there. Okay, so now we can just replace our traditional media queries. So I believe I am using the small breakpoint. So let me open up the shopping cart. Let's look for SM colon. And let's replace these with lead large breakpoint for container queries. So let me just select all of them like I did before. And let's replace it with at for container queries. I want the large container size and add a colon. And that should do it. Save that. Let's go back to the browser here. Let me just close DevTools. And you can see this shopping cart component is now using the mobile version within this drop down here, but it's still using the desktop version within the main content here because we're now making use of container queries and it's now looking at the size of the container as opposed to the size of the viewport. So yeah, that's container queries within Tailwind CSS. Again, very similar to how media queries are handled. As I mentioned in the previous video, browser support has gotten really good over the last few months or so, and only Firefox currently does not support it. Once it does, definitely keep container queries in mind when implementing your responsive designs.